How is capitalism like feudalism? This has been one of the way, one of the main ways that's helped me to sort of break through the class unconsciousness of my own delusions. <coughs> what is class consciousness? How is capitalism like feudalism? How has it helped me in my life? And how has it helped the my followers? Please subscribe. I'm going to go into detail about this, but like and subscribe. <clears throat> Tell me about what you think in the comments. Tell me about the jobs you hate. Or if you're an employer, tell me about your struggle to become, to leave the working class and to arise to the next, the glorious, the virtuous nobility of a capitalist. Tell me about that because there is nobility and ability in the meritocratic idealism of capitalism. Like and subscribe. Okay, so how is capitalism like feudalism? I went into another discussion here about Richard Wolff who talked about just the given nature and historicity of capitalism moving from the Bur the Burgess class of mercantile new ant you know out of the peasantry trading journeymen who sorry I got burps here journeymen who were moving away from the old models l'ancien regime capitalism you see you say okay, okay I have to refer to some of the post marxist academics, intellectuals, in order to get give you a good understanding of why capitalism is like feudalism. Because given given the state of Marxism, yeah, I know, socialism, communism, were they were atrocities. Some of the worst employed systems that have ever arisen on this planet. Failures, utter failures. And what I am against is the bloody revolutions. I want a peaceful revolution. Let's take the moral high ground. The working class people is the, are the majority around here. And what we, what the capital with the commu the communist socialist revolution tries to do is to try to an rally up the working class for what? To implant some sort of a proletariat dictatorship that nev that inevitably is going to fail. We don't need to repeat history. We don't need to risk the lives of another million people going to the gulags and concentration camps. The National Socialistische. We don't need the National Socialists. We don't need the Democratic Socialists. We need a reformation of capitalism. And but the first step in understanding why feudalism is like ca capitalism is like feudalism comes in understanding the general basis of what the feudal society was structured around. We have, of course, the Marxist idea of base structure of society. The base being the uh, being the su the supportive nature, the the ideals, the economy. and the structure basically helping helping to sustain that. We have, the of course the Catholic Church, which was one of the foundational models, worldviews of the feudal system. We have the rights of kings, the 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 clergy, the clerical order of the ecumenicals. We have essentially the the social dominance hierarchy between knights and lords and and sorry goes kings, knights, emperor, king, knight, fief. A baron, I think, and then serf. We need to, uh, to, in order to understand that, you have to have a really good knowledge of how what, what the role that Catholicism played in maintaining all of that. So, when you have when you look at Catholicism as a religion, as a given worldview, it it <laughs> encompasses all people. All things are all things are helped and and maintained by the Lord, their God. This given when when a peasant notices himself injected into this system, there's a there is a rationality behind it because not only does the king get his slash her you know the king or the queen get their power from the the great divine from God himself, <coughs> but that power is then transmuted into the subsequent classes. The The king owns the entirety of the country who gives dominance, uh, prevalence to a, a fief, his to a, to a lord in a manner who then subsequently 
to divvies out his share of power to the knights who then have power over the the serfs who are the peasantry the way that this functioned was on the grounds of gaining uh was, was sorry to giving <coughs> to giving credence to to god and then this is the way that that god had chosen for people to live <laughs> so to, to go against it would go to go going against the very foundations that god himself had left for the given feudal middle age people in the middle ages middle aged people in the middle ages i don't know how old they are but the understanding that worldview that basis of ideology formed the structure of society around the life of the peasant and the noble person now what do we have in in capitalism what is the religion of capitalism well it's difficult to say what exactly orthodoxy we abide to what is the ongoing great belief system that maintains it <laughs> now it's not a, the one of the main problems i think is that it hasn't manifested into a full blown monetary orthodoxy of a cult of worshiping in the same sense that we saw back in the middle ages or that we've seen in any other religion the thing about capitalism is that it is a religion it's a very extremist ideology where people a person's worth is based on their ability to their monetary qualitative value that's that the, has been determined by the market that is a very fundamentalist idea however there's been no structural symbology around it to unify it into a coherent orthodoxy and so it's been relatively very surreptitious in the way that it arises and the way that we see it we see it when we go to the bank it's uh what is a bank other than a temple that's devoted to this worship of of money and yet banks don't have the problem with banks is that we've we've castrated divinity from our religion and it has left a vapid hole in the traditions and cultures of our peoples of our working class peoples of our capitalist peoples it has been poverty of culture and tradition has been left in the wake we have this <laughs> it's the arising of of not only of industrial capitalism but also the postmodern condition of capitalism where we've the the constant ongoing necessity to maintain a any sort of a multi varying stories the there's never any overlying story which they call a macro narrative it's always based on these very small stories we have hollywood as every season comes out with a new story and none of them flow it's only been recently that serialization and episodic interpretations of these archetypal hero hero myths have become more of a an ongoing thing is or being being more fanaticized since the ages of Star Wars and Lord of the Rings and Star Trek is where we're seeing a, a people embodying and enacting this 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 craving for an orthodoxy of capitalism of of story in narrativizing themselves into a given this given social hierarchy and yet for some reason for the the problem that that it arises is that for some reason it's difficult to to speak about it it's almost taboo to talk about the given uh, to to look at it in and divide it into a social hierarchy we have to maintain that that given principle of division of stories never does star trek pour into star wars never does never does lord of the rings pour into game of thrones and and yet when we had the council of nicaea compile the entirety of the book of the bible we saw the same thing we need to, i think we need to compile all of our pop pantheon into a single or at least adopt a world view which shows that the that all of these texts are important to understanding the basic uh, religious mythology of capitalists because all of these 
all these people who wrote this were in service to that to that force, that immortal force of money. Peace be upon it. Money is God. And so understanding that uh, that there's a there is a given religion and it's very it has yet since my coming here had no given orthodoxy or structure whatsoever. I am in the process as you follow me, I am compiling and trying to create a traditional cultural narrative structure, a macro narrative, a big story that embodies and explains everybody's livelihoods, everybody's position in history, gives them credence, divine, whatever God is, you can be, we could be a universal sort of cult, we could be a universal sort of religion that it, he, he, what is it, um, uh, henotheism, henotheistic, where we, uh, where everybody in their, their own belief system has some sort of credence to providing in the divine nature of, of being. And then we also have uh, not just the, the religious aspects of it. Now, I, I talked in a detail about how the bank, a bank is a temple, a bank is a temple of worship and we need to treat it like a, a place of worship. We uh, even more so than modern modern churches. We also have Starbucks and Walmart, where commodities have been presented as these fetish objects. They're mass produced, yes, but they they embody a sort of theology to them. the The divine feeling of drinking Coke is is almost an ecstatic point at which we are reaching the zenith of our capitalistic endeavors as followers of this given religion. And then we have businesses. And from there, we I want to go into the detail about determining and the importance of why we need to determine how this has helped me is determining the lineage of people's classes. Now, who would you put at the top of the of the system? I think that a president functions more like the more like the religious center of the. He's more the ecumenical functioning. It doesn't really it doesn't play that much into the into the into the greater scheme of your life. You don't feel it as much. He's not active. A president is not actively oppressing you or he's not actively imposing himself upon you however it's more or less drawing out the guidelines for how this game of capitalism is supposed to be played which is the same which is the same way as which the popes and the order of ecumenicals were determining the rights of kings and drawing out the even the livelihoods and importance of worship for the for the common peasant and what do they, what do they do besides <clears throat> they uh, divvy out their power to to the to the lower the lower echelons? But I don't think that they they're necessarily as as powerful per per se as the as the capitalists. We all know about the the great power of of lobbying and basically. I'm just tiring myself out here talking. I try to I do all of my of my videos back to back. So this is getting the the brunt the brunt end of it. What we have is uh what's the most most interesting facet of this to me are the men in their ivory towers, the the capitalist lords or even the kings of business. What is what is Jeff Bezos other than the leader of a small nation? He has what? How many? Like a million employees or something? I don't. I'm not sure. But if you took it back to the Middle Ages, the amount of people that are that are under the jurisdiction and and gaze of Jeff Bezos could be perceived as being a small country. It def, definitely in comparison to the Middle Ages, there were where there was much less people under the population. You could compare. Jeff Bezos to some sort of a king, a king of industry. What industry would that be? I'd say he was the industry of online business. He's definitely the the definitely the king of online business. And who's the next? Who would be who would be the next in that cycle? I think the billionaires, the most richest people on the planet, should be considered 
almost as kings. They live opulent enough to be considered considered royalty. Uh, it would be what's what's his name? Um, oh God, Bill Gates. Bill Gates with Microsoft. Their products are resounding around the world. Their influence is overwhelmingly powerful. Despite the fact that they hold little to no political power whatsoever, their importance in society is felt by every single person. Let's consider him the king of technology. You can consider him the king of technology. He owns it all. But then what would that put? Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs would probably be a saint. He'd probably be because once you die, his his we, we elevate him to a level of almost divinity and sainthood. We always I, I did another video on the entrepreneur gurus and just talks about how the capitalist system elevates these entrepreneurs to almost a status of guruship, like they're they're spiritual leaders and. So that so we could we could say that, and then where would where would the next issue be? Well, just as like just as a lord divvies out his individual power, which he attains from the ecumenical class of of clerics, he would divvy this power within held within Bill Gates sitting as a figurehead goes to who the CEO. Well, maybe you know maybe a CEO is also the founder and multi billionaire shareholder of the company. You could also consider that there may be, there's sort of a, a relation in, in meritocratic. We don't have any clearly drawn symbolism to determine and, and regiment this quote-unquote meritocratic society into a true meritocracy. There's no, there's no clear-cut goals. It's just if you get the most money, then good job, you win. But we, as humans, we need to have a, a hierarchy. So... This is this is how I rationalize my existence in the in the hierarchy of of capitalism. You have the CEOs or the multi-billionaire industry leaders who are ruling the industry with an iron fist as the who have the market share see them as the as the kings. Now king what does a king have? He holds he holds a many different sort of a, a multitude of of vassals under him. He <coughs> Jeff Bezos doesn't just have Amazon. He's got that that blue sky, I don't know, the the space organization. He's got Amazon Prime, Audible. He's got he's even got Whole Foods. This is this is essentially a this is essentially a king now who now has the the serfs or the the subsidiaries, not the serfs, sorry, not the serfs. But the subsidiaries are acting lordships he, because a king has to be able to give out his power a little bit in order, or else he'd go crazy. He has to be able to, um, uh, <coughs> what's the what's the word here? Um, just g give your power out, and and to delegate. He's got to delegate his position to the lower people. To the lower lower levels, and what do you have? You have the CEO of Whole Foods, the CEO of 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 Amazon, maintaining Bill Gates. Uh, you have the C you have the the executives, the high executives, the president. Who are these people, other than perhaps based on their of their level of expertise? I'd say if if you've had more than ten years at a company as the executive officer, I think that that would be enough to sort of describe you in the class system as having some sort of a high nobility. Maybe it's maybe as it maybe that coincided with the amount of employees under you as well as your your income level could determine maybe you have the maybe you have you get two hundred thousand a year plus stock and you've also been at the business for 10 years with 500,000 employees at that business, you are now essentially a lord, okay? A lord CEO. And where do the, and who is under the lord CEO? They, they could share their power a little bit. The lord CEO and the Baron Von CFO, chief financial officer, and then Duke... Uh, Duke chairman of the of the directors board and you, you know let's make it spice this up let's create a symbolism here 
and then you have the then you have the general when you have the directors who's the chief director who's the head director would be like a knight or if you had a multitude of executives could be knights and then under that the generals the the managers that's those are the those would be essentially the the difference between the that's where I see the working class people that's where I that's where I come in I think that the directors people of the directorate staff are essentially commissioned officers of working class people the then you have the managers who are the who are more like the um enlisted a manager is like a like a staff sergeant and then uh, entry level is the private you're coming in right at the end, like the beginning, and then you work your way up. You become from a private, a data, a special. You become a from a sorry from a private uh, entry level. You could become a specialist corporal to a uh, agent as a sergeant, and then a staff sergeant, man, assistant manager, and then maybe a E seven. Or something, um, manager, and then a regional manager could be like the master chief, and then you have the directors and the executives who encompass a varying degrees of their skills and and merit. How the what their what their net worth is, how they've how they've navigated society to be determined in various modes of nobility. But other than that, uh, you have to understand there is the idea of meritocracy, meritocracy, which is a central tenet of capitalism, is that there is ability, there is nobility in ability. All right, I have I have greatly used up my time and my energy. I'm ready to go. Please follow me at the Working Class Guru here. Subscribe, leave a comment, like if you're an employer, employee. Let me know how you uh, how you agree with me or disagree with me. Uh, regardless if you agree with me or disagree with me, as long as you obey the capitalist system and you chase money with your entire life, your livelihood and your entire life revolves around obtaining money, then you are still a part of my religion. You don't have to you don't have to to nod your head at everything I say. You're still doing what I what I preach. When you pay for your food, when you go to the store and you consume commodities, when you are engaging in the social caste system and applying for jobs and still demanding that there be jobs, I'm just saying let's create a divergence in morality. As Nietzsche says, we, we don't have to be a, create a universal, this universal morality. Let's try to instill a sense of traditions and a sense of camaraderie in the majority of people who are the working class people. Let's, we're, we're moving back towards the, the ancient system. So all hail the machine. Uh, go to work. Get cracking. I'm the working class guru.